This channel features challenging classes that are long enough in length to help you strengthen your practice. This flow is inspired by rocket yoga and it moves quickly to fit in lots of fun asanas from both the primary and intermediate series of Ashtanga Yoga. Welcome to Yoga Dose. My name is Cece. Today we have a rocket yoga inspired flow for you. It's kind of my own take on rocket yoga, throwing in some of my favorite postures and things to do. So just begin today in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Big toes together, heels slightly apart. Begin breathing in and out through the nose with a slight constriction in the back of the neck for your Ujjayi Pranayama. Root down through your feet and at the same time reach out through the crown of the head. And on your next inhale, lift your arms up and overhead, palms touching. And then grab your right wrist with your left hand and hinge over to the left side, stretching out through the right side body. Come back to center and take that side stretch on the other side. This time with the right hand, maybe around the left wrist. Keep trying to keep your hips in a neutral position. Release your hands, come back to center. And then inhale, arms overhead, stretching over to the left again, this time with your left arm down around along the leg and your right hand up and overhead. Maybe stretching a little deeper this time. Release and take it to the other side. Now stretching through the left side body. Release and come back to Samasiddhi. Then inhale, arms overhead. Maybe hook your thumbs and lean back, reaching through your heart and lifting your chin up. And then exhale, fold forward, maybe keeping a soft bend in the knees. And Keep in an interlace with your hands or maybe hook your thumbs here. Draw the navel in strongly, Uddiyana Bandha. And maybe tuck the chin. Release, plant the fingertips, inhale and lengthen the spine. And then exhale, fold all the way forward into Uttanasana. And then inhale, come all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, Samastitihi. Inhale, raise your arms up and overhead, gaze in between your thumbs. Exhale, fold forward, belly drawing in, maybe keeping a bend in the knees, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen your spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands. Now step your feet back, coming into a plank position. Shift forward about an inch, lower your elbows and lower all the way down onto your stomach. Taking your wrists underneath your elbows, lift the chest into a low cobra position. From here, lift the hips up and back, coming into your first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. From here, make sure your hands are shoulder distance and your feet hip distance apart. You're actively reaching your heels towards the ground, although they never have to touch. From here, bend the knees, gaze forward, hop or step up and inhale, lengthen. Exhale and fold forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms overhead, and exhale into Samasthitihi. Taking a few more Surya Namaskar A's. Akam, inhale, arms overhead. Due, exhale, fold forward, belly drawing in. Trini, inhale, come onto your fingertips, lengthen the spine. Chatwari, exhale, hop or step back into Chaturanga position. Pancha, inhale and lift the chin, lift the chest, upward facing dog. And Shat, exhale coming into Downward Facing Dog. Making sure your breath is steady. 
Inhales and exhales, matching in length. You're rotating your triceps back and your biceps forward, keeping your shoulders away from your ears. Gaze forward, bend the knees, sapta, inhale up, lengthen. Ashto, exhale, fold forward. Nava, inhale, arms overhead. And exhale, samasitihi. Again, ekam, inhale, arms up. Due, exhale, fold. Trini, inhale, lengthen the spine. Chatwari, exhale, move through Chaturanga. Pancha, inhale, into upward facing dog, belly drawing in. And Shat, exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. In this downward facing dog, you can take your right arm over towards your left ankle. Taking a gentle twist here, maybe having your feet wider than hip distance. And then when you want to, switch sides, taking the left arm around the right ankle. And your gaze should be up under your right armpit. Release that stretch, come back to downward facing dog. Bend the knees, gaze forward, hop or step up, inhale. And ashto, exhale, fold forward. Nava, inhale, rise up, arms overhead and exhale into Samasitihi, arms by the sides. Moving to Surya Namaskar B, deep bend in the knees for Utkatasana Chair Pose. Holding here, low belly drawing in, and then fold forward into Uttanasana, maybe beginning to straighten the legs more. Inhale and lengthen through the spine, Exhale, plant the hands, hop or step back into Chaturanga. Inhale, lifting into Upward Facing Dog. And exhale, hips up and back, Downward Facing Dog. From here, lift the right leg up into a three-legged dog with neutral hips. And then if you want to, maybe bend the right knee and open up the hip for a little hip stretch. Bring the right foot in between the hands now and lower onto the back left knee, taking a low lunge position. Maybe taking your arms up ahead, overhead with your palms together. Engage the left glute muscle, stretching out through that left hip flexor here. This is more of a modified Syria B. You can take all your Syria Bs like this if you want to. Now plant the hands, step your feet back into plank, lower chaturanga, inhale urdhva mukha and exhale adho mukha svanasana. Inhale, now lifting the left leg up, maybe bending the knee, stretching through the hip. Inhale, draw the knee in towards the chest and lightly step the hand, the foot in between the hands, lowering onto the back right knee for your low lunge. This time, flexing the right glute muscle. Maybe taking your gaze towards your thumbs. Now release, lower your hands down to the mat. Move through Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. And exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. creating a long line through your spine. Back of the legs, pressing actively towards the wall behind you. Now bend the knees, gaze forward, hop or step up and inhale, lengthen. Exhale and fold. Inhale, deep bend in the knees, Utkatasana chair pose. And exhale, Samasitihi. Again, Akam, inhale, bend the knees, chair pose. Due, exhale, fold forward, belly drawing in. Trini, inhale, lengthen. Chatwari, hop or step back, chaturanga. Pancha, inhale, upward facing. 
shut, exhale, downward facing. Sapta, step the right foot in between the hands, coming up into warrior one, deep bend in the front right knee. Hips squared off towards the front of the mat. Ashto, exhale, plant the hands, lower down, chaturanga. Nava, inhale, upward facing. Desha, exhale, downward facing dog. Ekadasha, step the left foot in between the hands, lifting up, warrior one. Left hip drawing back, right hip drawing forward. Both legs engaged. Duadasha, lower down, chaturanga. Triodasha, inhale, upward facing. And Shatwardasha, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Low belly and low ribs are drawing in. Your quads are engaged, lifting from the kneecaps. Gaze forward, bend the knees, hop or step up, inhale. Shodasha, exhale, fold. Saptadasha, bend the knees, back into chair pose. And exhale, samasitihi. Another B, Akam, inhale, deep bend in the knees, gaze between the thumbs. Due, exhale, fold forward. Trini, inhale, lengthen the spine. Chatwari, exhale, jump or step back. Pancha, inhale, upward facing. Shat, exhale, downward facing. Sapta, right leg, inhale, warrior one. Ashto, exhale, plant the hands, move through Chaturanga. Nava, inhale. Desha, exhale, back, downward facing dog. Ekadasha, left foot, inhale, warrior one. Tvadasha, plant the hands, Chaturanga, exhale. Triodasha, inhale, upward facing. Shatwardasha, exhale, downward facing dog. Steady breathing, using these Siri Namaskar bees to warm up our body, build lots of heat. Panchadasha, take your gaze forward, bend the knees, hop or step up, inhale, lengthen. Shodasha, exhale, fold. Saptadasha, bend the knees, inhale, exhale, samastitihi. Bend the knees, inhale into Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, jumper step back, Chaturanga. Pancha, inhale. And shot. Exhale, hips up and back. Again, right leg lifts, warrior one. Arms overhead. Lower the hands, move through Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, back into downward facing dog. Ekadasha, left foot steps. Inhale, warrior one. Dvadasha, plant the hands. Move through chaturanga. Shoulders no lower than elbows. Inhale, upward facing. And exhale, downward facing dog. Come back, steady breathing. Mm. You're engaging your bandhas, Uddiyana Bandha, Mula Bandha. Gaze forward, hop or step up, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend the knees, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Inhale, reach your arms up and overhead, and then exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, Jump or step back, chaturanga. Inhale into upward facing dog. And then exhale into downward facing dog. From here, lift the right leg up, three-legged dog, maybe bending the right knee, stretching through the hip. And maybe dropping that right foot back and over, taking wild thing. So you're keeping your left leg straight, your right leg is planted, and your right arm up and overhead. 
come back to a three-legged dog, and then bring your knee in towards your chest, your right knee. Lightly step the right foot in between the hands and lower it onto the left knee, coming back into that low lunge position. Make sure your right knee is right over the ankle. You're engaging the left glute muscles, sitting up nice and tall, drawing the navel in and up. You have the option to stay where you are or interlace your fingers, taking the palms up towards the sky, stretching a little bit deeper. You can lower your right hand down to the mat and take your left hand up and overhead, stretching through the psoas muscle on the left side. Inhale, come back to center, and then maybe interlace your fingers behind your back, taking a small back bend, lifting through your heart, lifting your chin, keeping the navel drawing in to protect the low back. Release that stretch and bring your hands both on the inside of the right foot, moving into lizard. You can maybe rock back and forth a little bit. You can take your right foot further out to the side of the mat. Maybe even lower onto a block or your forearms. Moving wherever you feel the best stretch in this lizard posture. You have the option to bend the left knee and reach back, grab the top of the left foot with the right hand, gazing up towards the ceiling and opening up through the right shoulder. Release that stretch. Plant your hands on the inside of the right foot, maybe taking Ekapada Kwindanyasana and then moving into Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale back into downward facing dog. We'll take those stretches on the left side now. Lifting the left leg up, three-legged dog, maybe stretching out through the hip with a bent knee. You can lower that left foot down, taking wild thing, this time keeping the right leg straight. A couple more breaths here in wild thing. Return back to your three-legged downward facing dog. Hug the left knee into the chest and then lightly step the left foot in between the hands lowering onto the back right knee. Coming up into low lunge, maybe resting your hands on top of the left knee. Check to make sure your left toes are pointing forward and your knees right over the ankle. Make sure you're engaging your right glute muscle and stamping the top of the right foot and the shin into the floor. Maybe interlace your fingers, turning the palms up, rise your arms overhead, keeping the low belly drawing in. You can put the left hand on the outside of the left mat, bring the right arm up and overhead, stretching into the psoas muscle on the right side. Inhale, come back to center, interlace, interlace your fingers behind your back, taking a small back bend here. Maybe your fingers will reach the mat, maybe they'll just be resting on your right hamstring. Only move as deep as what feels good for you. Plant the hands on the inside of the left foot, moving into lizard posture now, taking your hands to the inside of the left leg maybe resting on a block or your forearms. Maybe bending the right leg, grabbing the top of the right foot with the left arm, opening up the chest towards the ceiling, maybe taking your gaze upwards. 
Being careful with your knees in this position. Gently release that stretch and maybe from here taking your left leg onto your left tricep for Ekapada Kwindanyasana, scissors pose and then moving into Chaturanga. Lifting up into upward facing dog and exhaling back into downward facing dog. Regaining your steady breathing. Take your gaze forward, hop or step up to the top of the mat, inhale and lengthen. Exhale and fold forward. Inhale, bend the knees, coming into chair pose. And exhale into Samastitihi. Inhale, bend the knees, coming back into chair pose. A deep chair pose here, keeping length in the spine but really working towards drawing in the low belly towards your back. Maybe moving into Ardha Utkatasana stomach right over the thighs, arms up by the ears, and maybe even lifting up onto the toes. You can take your arms back behind you for drinking bird. Holding here on your toes, maybe lower the hips a couple more inches. Now release, planting the hands, moving into Bakasana, taking the knees up towards the armpits on the back of the arms, rounding through the upper spine, belly drawing in so strongly in this Bakasana. Trying to reach your heels towards your glutes, maybe straightening the arms any amount. From here, maybe lower the crown of the head to the ground, straighten the legs coming into tripod headstand. You want your elbows right over the wrist, arms 90 degrees. Draw your lower ribs towards your hip bones, glutes towards the heels. From here, maybe clap your hands and at the same time shoot back into Chaturanga. Move through your vinyasa and come to downward facing dog. Maybe hit pause and try that transition again. Inhale your right leg up and then bring it in towards the chest, step it in between the hands lifting up into warrior one on the right side. Again, deep bend in the front knee, hips parallel to the front of the mat. And make sure you have weight in the outer edge of your back left foot. Bring your hands into heart center, adjust your feet so your right Heel is lined up with your back arch, moving into warrior two. Extend the arms out and gaze over your front middle finger. You want to try to get your right thigh parallel to the mat. Keeping the back leg active. Begin to straighten the front leg, maybe shorten your stance. Hinge forward into Uthita Trigonasana triangle pose. You want your spine to be parallel to the floor. Your right hand can be resting on your shin, maybe on a block, or your first two finger and thumb can be wrapped around your big toe. If your neck feels good, take your gaze up towards the extended hand. Now taking your left hand to your waist, plant the right hand about a foot ahead, moving into Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. If you're steady, challenge your balance by taking your gaze up and at the same time, you should be pressing so strongly out through the left heel. You have an option here too to bend the left knee, grab the top of the left foot with the left hand, taking a half bind here. Release that bind and move into standing splits. Drawing your nose towards your right shin, maybe lifting the left leg even higher, belly drawing in so strongly. Then plant your hands and take a couple handstand hops. You're set up so perfectly for handstanding when you uh, take standing splits, so feel free to take an opportunity, maybe catch your balance here. You can take a few hops. If you're balancing, stay there. 
and then slowly lower down keeping the left leg lifted right leg planted now we'll move into revolved half moon pose so your left hands planted your right arms reaching up and you're twisting through your upper thoracic spine you can also reach back with your right hand and grab the left foot taking a bind here maybe taking your gaze up towards the ceiling release that back foot line up front heel to back heel straighten both legs and move into Pavrita Trikonasana revolved triangle pose still twisting over to the right side hips squared off towards the front of the mat belly drawing in both legs are straight and active here you want weight in the ball of your front foot really engaging those legs now release your hands to the mat and move into Pavrita Parsvokonasana twisted side angle you can keep your hands at your heart twisting over to the right with your left elbow on top of your knee or take your right arm behind you and your left arm underneath taking a bind if you're bound you can move into a reverse bird of paradise stepping the left leg up and then raising the right leg up maybe taking your gaze over the right shoulder here being very careful with your shoulders in this revolved bird of paradise slowly lower the right leg down and then turn towards the front of your mat for side crow so bend your chaturanga arms and balance your hips right on the arms maybe spreading the legs or keeping them together and then move through chaturanga either jumping straight back from parsvapokasana or just taking a regular chaturanga from here from your downward facing dog it's our pinja party time <laughs> So set up for forearm stand or just take dolphin. If you're setting up for forearm stand, maybe try hopping up with both feet or just kick one leg up at a time, maybe catching your balance in Pincha Mayarasana. Drawing the low ribs towards the frontal hip bones, engaging that core. Your gaze is in between your forearms. Slowly lower down and rest in child's pose. We'll have another opportunity for Pincha Mayarasana, but you can always just hold dolphin pose. It's downward facing dog on your forearms, and that will help you build a lot of strength needed to do forearm stand. Make your way into a downward facing dog. From here, inhale and lift your left leg up. Draw your knee in towards your chest and lightly step the left foot down, coming up into warrior one on the left side. Your right back foot is at about a 45 degree angle. You have weight in the outer edge of the right foot, keeping that right leg active. Your left knee is bent right over the ankle. Bring your hands into your heart. Adjust your feet so you're lined up front heel with back arch and move into warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. Engage your tricep muscles, active arms reaching out through your fingertips. Maybe sink down a little bit lower. Left thigh parallel to the mat. Inhale, straighten the left leg, hinge forward, taking Utita Trikonasana Triangle Pose. Left hand on a block, on your shin, or wrapped around the big toe. Engage every muscle in your front leg and your back leg. Even though they're straight, they're still very active, rooting down through the feet reaching out through the crown of the head and back through the tailbone. Place your right hand on your hip, moving into Ardha Chandrasana, left hand planted about a foot ahead of the pinky toe side of the left foot. 
your right foot is extended straight out, pressing out through the heel, or you're reaching back with the right hand, binding with the right foot, pressing the foot away from the hand if you're binding. Maybe gazing up towards the ceiling, keeping steady balance. Release the right foot, move into standing splits, drawing your nose towards your left shin, maybe wrapping the left hand around the calf. You can stay here, or you have an opportunity to take a few handstand hops again, this time kicking off with your left foot, belly drawing in, shoulders right over the wrists, maybe take a few handstand hops or catch your balance. Sometimes this side is a little bit harder than the other side to kick off with. Just notice any differences in both sides. Now lower down from handstand, keeping the right leg lifted. You're moving into twisted half moon pose, Pavrita Ardha Chandrasana. Right hand planted, maybe reaching back with the left arm, binding with the right foot. Gazing up towards the ceiling. Release that posture. Line up front heel with back heel. Legs are both straight. Your right hand on the outer edge of the left foot. Pavrita Trikonasana. Every inhale here, lengthen your spine, reaching out through the crown of the head, out through the tailbone. And every exhale, see if you can twist a little bit deeper, bringing your chest even more towards the left side of your mat. Lower your hands to the mat, lengthen your stance, and move into Pavrita Parjva Konasana Twisted Side Angle, maybe keeping your hands at your heart or binding behind your back. If you're bound, you can take Reverse Birds of Paradise by stepping the right foot up to meet the left, and then lifting the left leg up, being very gentle with your shoulders, and then gazing back over the left shoulder. Your shoulders are the most mobile joint in the body, so just be very careful with them. Slowly lower back down, and then move into side crow by balancing onto your chaturanga arms. You can split the legs, maybe bring the legs together, and then you have the option to shoot straight back into chaturanga. Inhale into Urdhva Mukha and exhale hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Lower onto your knees, second opportunity for our Pinchamayarasana. Your forearms are shoulder distance apart, plant the hands and the forearms down firmly, walk the feet up in dolphin, stay here or hop the legs up into forearm stand. Catching your balance here. You're pressing down so strongly through the palms, through the forearms. You can use a wall behind you to catch your balance if you need to. And then slowly lower down, resting in child's pose. Come back to your steady breathing. Your forehead can be lightly resting on the mat. From here, make your way into a downward facing dog. Hop or step up to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, fold forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms overhead. And exhale, Samasthitihi. From here, taking Uttita Hasta Padangustasana, grab the right big toe with the first two finger and thumb, lifting the right leg up. You can always keep your right knee bent or use a strap here. Try not to lean back. And then inhale, take your right leg out to the side, gaze over your left shoulder. Breathing deep here rooting down through that left foot. Inhale, bring your leg back to center. 
and exhale, fold forward, touching your nose to your knee. Inhale, stand back up, and then bring your hands to your waist, keeping your leg lifted. Make sure you're not leaning back. And then take your left hand to the outside of the right foot, reach the right arm behind you, and gaze over your right shoulder. Taking this twist here, and gently release. Come back to Samastitihi, taking that same series on the left side now. Inhale, raise your left leg, catch the big toes with the first two finger and thumb. Lengthen the spine, root down through the right foot. Squeeze your right glute, helps you balance. Try to keep your gaze or your drishti in one spot to help you balance. Now take the left leg out to the side and turn your gaze over the right shoulder. Inhale, bring the leg back to center. Exhale, fold forward, touch your nose to your knee. Inhale, lengthen, come back up. Release your left hand, bring it to your waist, holding the left leg up. Using your hip flexors. Then take the right hand to the outer edge of the left foot and take the left arm back behind you. Maybe you, having your gaze follow that hand if you're steady. Inhale, release. Exhale, samastitihi. Come back to the top of your mat. Step the left foot back, coming into a wide leg position. Grab the waist, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold forward, planting the hands. Create length through the spine for prasarita A. And then exhale, fold all the way forward so that the crown of your head touches the ground or a block. And your, feet are, your hands are in line with your feet. You have an option here to go into a tripod headstand. Just straddle pressing up into the headstand and then holding here. Or you can just hold prasarita A. Slowly split the legs, lower them down to the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, catch the waist. Inhale, rise all the way up. Inhale, your arms out to the side. Grab your waist, moving into prasarita D. B, folding forward, keeping your hands at your waist, using your fingers to draw your navel in, reach the crown of the head towards the ground, engage the quads, your toes should be slightly pointed in towards each other, just a little bit, making sure that your feet aren't collapsing either towards the inside or the outside. You want equal weight on all four corners of the feet. Inhale, rise all the way up. Moving into Prasarita C. Interlace your fingers behind your back, lengthen, and then exhale, fold forward. Keeping the interlace, maybe using a strap or hooking your thumbs if your shoulders are tight. On your inhales, you can reach the hands further away from your body and on your exhales, lower them down towards the ground. Inhale and rise all the way up. Moving into Prasarita D, slide your arms down your legs. Grab a hold of your big toes with your first two finger and thumb. And then exhale, bend the elbows, draw the crown of the head towards the ground, navel drawing in strongly. Prasarita D. Your deepest forward fold of class so far. Inhale, create length. Now plant the hands and either slide your feet out into middle splits or lower your knees into frog mandukasana. If you're in frog, your ankles are lined up with your knees and your toes are pointing outward towards the side. This pose can be uncomfortable at first, but over time it gets more comfortable the more you do it. You can play around with shifting your hips, 
back and see if that intensifies the stretch. Then when you're ready, move towards the back of your mat or wherever your left leg is and fold forward over a straight left leg for half Hanumanasana, half splits. You can stay there or slide all the way out for full Hanumanasana, keeping the right foot, the left foot flex, sorry, keeping the leg engaged, maybe even folding forward over the left leg. Inhale slowly and gently, come up and move towards the front of your mat, taking half splits on your right leg, flexing the right foot, keeping the quad engaged. You can stay in half splits or slide all the way out into full Hanumanasana. And just remember, it never matters how deep you get into a posture. It just matters that you're feeling a good stretch. No injury is worth getting all the way to the ground in splits. So just move carefully. Take your time in these deep stretches. Walk your right toes out towards the left side of the mat, lowering now into pigeon pose. Keeping your left leg behind you, fold forward over the right leg. Try to keep the right foot flexed to protect the knee while you're in pigeon, and keep the back leg active. Pressing down through the top of the foot and the shin, keeping your hips level, if you find you're rolling onto your right hip, maybe put a block or a blanket underneath. Stay there or reach back, bending the left knee, maybe flipping the grip or taking mermaid arms, just intensifying the quad stretch on the left side. Swing the left leg forward, hug the left knee in towards the chest, and then twisting into Ardha Matsyandrasana, half lord of the fishes. You can keep your right arm bent on top of the left knee or extend it straight, grabbing the inside of the left foot. And your left arm is behind you and your gaze should be over your left shoulder. Come back to center, moving into Gomukhasana. Stack the knees, left knee on top of the right knee. And then maybe taking your right arm up, bending the elbow, reaching the left arm back behind you. Maybe clasping hands and folding forward any amount for Gomukhasana. Cow face pose. Inhale, coming back up. Now you can take a fun transition, planting the crown of the head, lifting your legs up into a tripod headstand and then switching the cross of the legs so that the right knee is on top of the left knee, lower back down into Komokasana. That's just a fun transition I like to do. From here you can bend the left elbow and then reach the right arm behind your back, clasping hands, and then fold forward any amount with your belly drawing in strongly. Inhale, lifting up, hug the right knee into the chest, and then twist over to the right, taking Ardha Matsyandrasana on the other side. This time, your right arm is wrapped behind you, your gaze over the right shoulder, and your left arm can be bent on top of the right knee or extended all the way down, grabbing the inside of the right foot. Swing the right leg behind you, coming into pigeon on the left side. Keeping the left foot flexed, neutralizing the left knee joint. And your right leg is active in this stretch. You can bend your right knee, reaching back for the top of the foot maybe flipping your grip, 
turning your chest towards the front of the mat, stretching through the quad on the right side. From here, tuck the right toes, lift the knee into the chest, and then step back into downward facing dog. Bend the knees, gaze forward, hop or step all the way through into boat pose Navasana. You can straighten the legs or keep a soft bend in the knees. Lengthen the spine. Now plant the hands, lift up and take an optional handstand hop from here. Lower back down onto your sit bones for Navasana number two. So instead of handstands, you can always take liftoffs, but if you want to, for fun, instead of liftoffs, Plant the hands, lift the bum off the ground, and then take a handstand hop, trying to catch your balance. And then slowly lower the knees back down, coming back into Navasana number three. Lifting the chin, lifting the chest. Core engaged strongly. Couple more breaths. Plant the hands, hug the knees in, maybe take a handstand hop, or just lift off. See if you can catch your balance. And from this one, just move back into Chaturanga. Inhale into Upward Facing Dog and exhale into Downward Facing Dog. Bend the knees, gaze far forward. Shift forward into plank and slowly lower down all the way to your stomach. Moving into Shalabhasana A, tops of the hands planted, chest lifting, reaching out through the crown of the head and out through the toes. And you're spiraling your inner thighs towards each other. Move into Shalabhasana B, bending the elbows. And then pressing down through the hands, lift into upward facing dog, and then back into downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, shift into plank, lower all the way back down to your stomach for Dhanurasana bow pose. This time reaching your hands back for the ankles or the tops of the feet, lifting up into bow pose. Belly drawing in. Gently lower down, plant the wrists under the elbows, and then lift up into Upward Facing Dog, and exhale back into Downward Facing Dog. Bend the knees, gaze far forward, come to seated with the right knee bent, the ankle on the outer edge of the right hip, moving into Tiriyamukha Ekapada Paschimottanasana, wrap your hands around the left leg, Lengthen and then exhale, fold forward, belly drawing in. If you have any pain in the right knee, maybe elevate your hips on a block or a blanket. Inhale, lengthen, lift up, moving into crown chasana now. So you're just going to wrap your arms around the foot of the left leg, lifting it off the ground, and then trying to get your chin towards your shin belly drawing in, taking your gaze up towards your foot, lengthen, and then release. Now moving into Bharavadrasana, you're going to take your left leg into half lotus, reach your left arm back behind you, grabbing the foot, and then your right arm is going to go underneath your left knee, the top of the hand underneath the left knee twisting over your left shoulder for Bharavadrasana. This is one of my favorite second series twists. But if your knee hurts in half lotus, you can always just take your foot to the inside of the thigh. From here, move through Chaturanga, take a vinyasa, or go straight to downward facing dog. Bend the knees, Gaze forward, hop all the way through, this time with the left knee bent, foot on the outside of the left hip for Tiriyana Mukha. 
Wrap your arms around the right foot, lengthen the spine, and exhale, fold forward, belly drawing in. Keeping the right foot flexed, quadricep engaged. Inhale, lengthen the spine, moving into crown chasana. Lift the right leg up and fold forward any amount, trying to keep your spine lengthened. Lengthen the arms. Release crown chasana. Now moving into Bharavadrasana, taking the right leg into half lotus, reaching the right arm behind, grabbing onto the foot, and taking the left arm, palm on the ground, fingertips under the right knee. Gaze over the right shoulder. Again, if half lotus is hurting your knee today, just take your right foot to the inside of the left thigh like Johnny Shirsasana. Release the right leg. Move through Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees. Come through to seated. Lie down onto your back. For bridge pose, taking your feet hip distance apart, Put weight into the heels and lift the hips up off the ground, keeping the chin away from the chest. Use your legs to lift your hips even higher. Back bends use a lot of leg strength, and you know you're doing it right if you feel fatigued in the legs. So now you can move into Urdhva Dhanurasana, or wheel pose. But again, focus here, putting weight in the legs. Lower down onto the crown of the head. And then maybe lift back up into Urdhva Dhanurasana number two. Again, feel the engagement in the legs. Squeeze your thigh towards each other as though they're squeezing a block. Gently lower all the way down. Hug the knees into the chest. Gently rock side to side. Releasing any tension in the lower spine. Begin to rock up and down along your spine. And on your final rock, Use your momentum to come forward into a standing forward fold. Belly drawing in, taking the counter position for Urdhva Dhanurasana. You can just grasp opposite elbows or maybe the backs of your legs. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, step back into downward facing dog and then lower down onto your knees. Now moving into sheer sasana, headstand, bound headstand. Make sure your hands are shoulder distance apart. Interlace your fingers, creating a golf ball sized, um, envision you're holding a golf ball in the interlace of your hands and keeping that same roundness, bring your wrists towards the top of your head and then lift up into headstand. So many times people just, um, they kind of cup their entire head with their palms, but you should really have a space there so that your entire wrist and forearms are flat on the ground to support you because only one third of the weight is in your head and the rest of the weight is in your forearms, actively stamping down. So if you're meditating in headstand, I'm sorry for that spiel. But just be careful with your neck. Your neck is so important, your cervical spine. If you're balancing in headstand, draw the frontal ribs towards the frontal hip bones. 
Squeeze the glutes and draw them towards the heels. Keep steady breathing the entire time, reaching up through the balls of the feet. Feel free to come down at any time and come back up. But if you're balancing here in headstand, begin to slowly pike your legs coming into Ardha Shirsasana, belly drawing in, legs piked out straight. Inhale, lift the legs back up. And exhale your legs down very slowly, moving into child's pose, Balasana. Maybe taking your arms behind you and gently pressing your forehead into the mat. Resting here in child's pose. When you're ready, plant the hands, come into plank position. Lower Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. And exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Bend the knees, gaze forward. Hop or step through to seated. Moving into lotus half lotus or just a cross-legged seated position. Taking the arms behind your back, maybe grabbing opposite feet, lowering the head, folding forward into Baddha Padmasana, sealing in the benefits of the practice. This posture also represents the end of the physical practice. And from here, if you'd like to, you can take Mayurasana with your legs in lotus, your fingers pointing backwards, and then move through Chaturanga. You can always skip this vinyasa if you want to. The final vinyasa of class. If you took it and you're in down dog, gaze forward, come through and lie all the way down onto your back for our final resting position, Shavasana. Let go of your Ujjayi breathing. Let your body sink into the mat and just rest.
Bring your breath back to your body, making small movements, wiggling your fingers or your toes, taking any stretches that feel good at this moment, maybe arms overhead. Hug your knees into your chest, maybe roll off onto your side. And just slowly make your way into a seated position. Inhale, bring your arms overhead and down into your heart. Thank you so much for taking the time to practice with me. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Have you ever felt like social media was getting you down? I loved this talk by Bailey Parnell about the impact that social media has on us, whether we realize it or not. What I love most is she gives very helpful tips on how to create a more positive experience for yourself online. You should definitely check it out.